Hello, Flying Bee. Hi, how you doing? Today, we're watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 6, Episode 14. Sheesh, after the last one, what the fuck's gonna happen in this one? What the fuck's gonna happen in this one? Oh my god. Also, side note, I'm trying to channel my inner Buffy from the early Season 6. Also, Fred again. I don't know. I don't know. I tried, and, um, I tried, like, half my wardrobe today, and I just, I got you. I didn't feel comfortable in any shirt. Uh, so basic black t-shirt here we go again anyways goodness gracious the last episode of buffy the vampire slayer was insane i am so pumped but also very nervous about this one because it's like where do we go from here as the entirety of the buffy the vampire slayer cast has said so eloquently where do we go from here because uh, i am just so like I'm intrigued like by the whole like spike thing and now we have like the whole you know the three bozos what's gonna happen with them and then I, it's just a lot it is a lot and uh before we jump into this episode obviously the last episode um lots of discussion lots of discussion happening about like you know spike and his behavior and all that um i was a little caught off guard but then it's like Again, he's a soulless vampire, so it's like, what did you expect? What did I expect, you know? Um, and I don't know. It's just very, very interesting how... I don't know. I'm just so excited to, like, at the end of the season, go back and see how all this... Like, how all of these actions, like, became this. Like, the last episode. Um, because it's... Like, the more I thought about it, the more I was like, no, this was, like... This was coming. Why did I not, like, expect this sort of thing to happen? Because it's like, you know, Buffy, you know, she's trying to be with Spike, but then she's trying to hide it. And then, you know, we had that one line um, a couple episodes ago where Spike's like, I'm the only one you have, you know, I'm the only one you have, like, with, like, uh, whatever. Um, you guys get that line. Um, and then, you know, trying to just, like, distance her from like, the life that she has, and obviously, like, Buffy coming back from the dead, being depressed as shit, and then, like, having to go through all of this, like, turmoil, and she's using, like, she's almost using Spike in a way, I mean, I feel like in a lot of ways, um, so then Spike, obviously, having, for me, I still feel like he has real feelings for her, um, using that and kind of being like you know like trying to like take it back try take back like the power that buffy has over him being like you know what no i'm the soul's vampire here i'm gonna be the one that's gonna be like no you come to the dark side with me honey you know and uh, i don't know there's just like a lot of back and forth with them and uh, i don't know at this point um i <laughs> i don't know i'm a little sad for Buffy. Uh, like always, I feel bad for her. Um, I did a, uh, video edit a couple days ago, um, kind of just deep diving into Buffy the Vampire- uh, god, I can't speak- into Buffy's character, and just- uh, it's literally, like, every single person that she's ever gotten close with has left her. Literally. Like, aside from, like, Willow Xander- and, like, Dawn, <laughs> literally every single person has left her. Like, you know, what? If, whether it was, like, Faith in, like, season three, then, like, you know, had, like, the whole, you know, we're both slayers. Oh, my God. And then she left. Even Kendra. Kendra was also a slayer. She fucking died. And then um, we had, you know, of course, Riley. We had Angel. We have Giles. We have Joyce. And it's, like all of these things adding up it's like holy shit how the fuck did she get through all of that like having such emotional connections with like all of these people i mean you know some more than others and it's like all of that adding up and then you have spike who's a soulless vampire you know similar to an ex who was a vampire but of course he had a soul angel and it's like you connect them to but then it's like do you want to put yourself through that pain again and then it's also like you know he's also a vampire again <laughs> it's like 
a lot of stuff happening. And obviously I'm very like all over the place right now because my thoughts are all over the place. <laughs> but regardless, Buffy's had so many people come into her life and then leave. So I understand like why she's probably so like hesitant to even just like talk about it like out loud with someone. So then her talking about it with Tara, love it. Adore. Literally one of my favorite te- scenes ever. <laughs> like I adore that scene just because it's such a payoff for like half of the season because it's like oh my god literally finally we get to like talk to Buffy and the audience gets to hear what Buffy has to say about that relationship and about that side of her life at the moment. Love it. Mm -hmm. Chef's kiss. Also we have the whole dream sequence which I was very confused on <laughs> to be quite frank it was very confusing for me when i first watched it i was like what the fuck are they trying to say here and a couple people were like well we see in the dream that she's like you know fantasizing about like spike in her own bed where it's like they obviously haven't you know done the deed like that like in her own bed so it's like where is that coming from you know obviously i have my super glasses you know just a little tilted like they're you, you know they're like i'm like looking over them a little bit but they're still on my face you know <laughs> um i'm sorry um and then in the dream it's like again the whole like power dynamic in the relationship just so freaking interesting. I I adore the show and I'm so excited to see what the next episode has in store. And of course we have the three bozos. Um, like I've already said many times, the last episode felt like a very big turning point for their characters and like their whole storyline. So again, where does that go? I have no fucking idea. Um, I don't know if they would be... Con- I don't know. It feels like something that they would should or that they would just keep on going with like you know we already had the ball rolling let's just keep going with it but i'm not sure very excited so yeah i'm gonna stop yapping and yeah let's just get into it also uh sorry i was uh my freaking quote of the day was on the wrong one it was supposed to be this one by anya uh yeah i was like this my curtain accidentally like flipped out over and then i was like oh no and i just put it back without even thinking I'm sorry. It's okay. No, we're gonna sit down and have a real dinner someday. Where you go? I hate someday. having to run out in the middle. It's just, you know, there's this thing out there. Interesting hat choice. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> We should set up lots of candles for Buffy's party tomorrow. Not if they're that horrible slug kind you keep trying to unload. <laughs> I don't know why people get so turned off by slug. Honey, slugs get turned off by slug. Tara, at the party. Oh. It's just Ugh. Buffy really wants her to. She t- <laughs> seems important to her, so I told her. I'm gonna cry. Kid. Oh no, I'm gonna oh. cry. <laughs> yeah, of course she should totally be there. It'll be I great. love Buffy so much. Hey. I love Tara. <laughs> I've got my group, you know, the whole Spellcasters Anonymous thing. We're still looking for a better name. Oh, well, yeah. Is uh, that no, a that, popular thing? Yeah, you should... <laughs> oh, God. I forgot she's in her little kleptomaniac era. Okay, Donnie. Oh, my God. What the heck? They need you in the guidance office. Oh. Okay, unrealistic. Every single child in that room would be like, ooh. So <laughs> Teachers say that you seemed a little distracted lately. This one's the Razorbacks, too? Uh, Did fine. they just relocate okay. Sunnydale High? It's just. Oh, and Sophie from work. Oh my god, you gotta work. Bestie! But, like I'm one of those losers who can't make friends outside our tight little circle? What's Sophie's last name? 
Okay, you don't know okay, that much up. about Don't worry about okay? it. We're all over the new friend thing. <laughs> we invited someone for you. Oh my god, little matchmakers? <laughs> <laughs> really? And if you oh. happen to form a romantic relationship leading to babies and many oh. double dates with us, so we have someone else to talk to, yay! I assume that this was an act of kindness. Please. I that felt that on you. <laughs> hey, you made it. I love her oh, so sweet. fucking much. <laughs> How are you oh. doing? Oh, you know, better, mostly. Their friendship literally Sometimes. giving me so much life. So oh my god. Uh, how are you? I'm great. I mean, fine. Yeah, why am I about to uh, tear uh, up? Finding me <laughs> fine, fine. Spike. Yeah. Fucking well, I mentioned it. I knew it. Big, but I'd uh, swing by. Wait, what kind of team is this? <laughs> Hi. We met once before. Oh my god, are they about I'm to Clement. trade kittens again? Tara. Buffy? Richard? No. Hey. Um, the guy with the skin condition. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Was he cute? I mean, I, I'm not a very good judge, but I think he seemed cute. I think he seemed cute. If we get Buffy, <laughs> can she start on opening the presents? Oh no, this is a shindig. I'm, I'm, busy I'm hyped right. for this drama. But making a new friend. You want to slip away for a minute, love? What? I'll let you blow up my candles. Here, now? I, I don't think so. It's her birthday. I'm Richard? sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't want to make your new boyfriend jealous, huh? It's a battery-operated back massager. It's like instant gratification for all your little achies. Great. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, what's Jesus next? Christ. Here, do you mind? <laughs> Don. Oh, the jackets. I was gonna say, well, Donnie's dressed like, like Buffy it? now, but it's, it's Buffy. Gorgeous. It, it still has the security tag on it. Stop. Sophie, welcome. Uh, we're somewhere between uh, presents and cake. <laughs> this Our is quite better. the party. <laughs> uh, we can do official introductions now that everyone's officially here. <laughs> Oh. My. God. No. I thought this actress looked a little Wish familiar. Granted. Oh my god! I- <laughs> Another Wish episode? Y'all already know. I'm pumped. I am pumped. Hey, so they all gonna be like stuck in there? I hope so. You look what time it is, no one's even thinking about leaving. Tara's like, suddenly I can't see anything. Uh... I had a uh, muscle cramp. Buffy was uh, helping. Right. No, you Tara go. may say Tara no, is the best go. character. No, no, you go. <laughs> okay, this sucks. I'm out. No Play way. Money. I think you're doing fine. You want to try poker? Still say it's weird without the kittens. I was no about kittens. to say, if he pulls out a kitten, I'm gonna scream. He's quirky. <laughs> Must be some late night activities to keep us busy till morning. How's that cramp, Spike? Still bothering you? What? Oh, yeah. Maybe you uh, wanna put some ice on it. You tell him, you tell him, Tara, you tell him. I was insane to ever think you could just hang out with my friends. I was insane to think no, wait. You were right. You're insane. Oh, hi. I think it's time for you to go. Yeah, well, can. Daylight. Okay, I'll go. I'll get the door. Fine. Fine. I'm actually trying to move right now. Me too. Well, this can't be good. <laughs> There's something keeping us in this house. So don't say the words I wish. Hence the problem. Forget. We all have places that we'd rather be. Things we'd rather be doing. I Spike? think the first priority has to be to find a way out. <laughs> sure. Of course Let's you'll want to leave. Dial it down. Because being stuck in here with me, that would really suck, right? Surprise Anya isn't like, hey, taking it personally. feels like something I would have done. Oh. Because, you know, sometimes we do something that seems like a good idea at the time. Like, say, invoke the power of a musical amulet. And turns out, you know... 
Not so much. Come on! I didn't do anything! I think she's possessed. She's a teenager. Anya. <laughs> the phones are all out. We're totally cut off. I just can't figure out why she didn't come to me. We well, have been a little busy lately. I think magic's gonna be our best bet. Something general, you know? Cast a wide net. <laughs> With those like, I what? need to leave. <laughs> I didn't bring any supplies. Uh, we don't have any in the house. We got rid of everything. Actually, not. What did she think? <sighs> Just bring me what you have. But then I'm doing this alone. You need to stay away from it. Jesus. <laughs> oh. All right. <laughs> this poor dude. Somebody really tell me what's, what's going on here. Release. No fucking shot. They did not just release the demon. They did not. This poor dude! That looks pretty bad. Oh my god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh. Let's get him upstairs. I promise we'll be out of here soon. Okay, so maybe soon was a bit of an overstatement. Oh Jeez. So, you ever think about not celebrating a birthday? Just to try it, I mean. You know what? Check upstairs. <laughs> Keep an eye on things down here. I'll be back in a second, okay? Stay here, don't move. I swear to god. I, t I don't like that. I'll be back in a second. I'm nervous. <laughs> Grab the sword! Oh, God. Are you hurt? We're sitting here with an incredibly powerful witch. Oh, God. Much more powerful than you, Tara. I'm sorry. I can't. And whose fault is that? You know, if you hadn't gotten so much of this in your system in the first place... Hey! You're gonna back off. She said no. And that's it. You're not gonna make her do something that she doesn't want to. And if you try, you're gonna have to go through me first. Understood? Tara, please. <laughs> Fine. She got you to start talking about things that bothered you at home? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you didn't, by any chance, happen to express, like, a, a wish or something to her? Um, maybe just a little. <laughs> maybe, maybe the words slip out a little bit. No! Oh. Half the stuff yeah. is from the magic box. Tell her you didn't do this. Tell her it's a mistake. She's like, well. <laughs> no. Oh, putting the pieces together. Unfortunate. Oh. You made a wish to someone you've never seen before. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, how can you be so she fucking stupid? Wear a pendant <laughs> with, a, with a dark blue stone and little red flecks. Oh, for crying out loud. How She's the only one who can get us out of here. Hallie, get your ass down here! You rang? <laughs> I hope you die, you stupid jumping! Oh my god! There will be no touching of the pendant. So is she good? William. Stop. Stop hey, it. 
You guys know each other? Uh, no. With the vengeance, you can spike. All right. <laughs> Good luck. What? It's the curse, Sally. For crying out loud. <laughs> Fine, the curse is lifted. We can all leave now. Damn it. Oh my god. She's like, ooh, my curse is a little too good. I don't know if you noticed, but it actually did get bad in there. Really bad, and you still said no. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go, Willow. Ow. This poor dude. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Jokey. This one was called Older and Far Away. Older and Far Away. I, I like that title. 7.6 rating. Uh, written by Drew Greenberg and directed by Michael Gershman. I really liked the directing in this episode. I will not lie. I liked it. Yeah, so this one was uh, interesting. I... I don't know. I am a sucker for these Dawn episodes this season. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, what was it? Like, Riding in Cars with Vampires or some shit? That episode? <laughs> was it All the Way? I forget. It was the one... Yeah, you guys know. It was like the Halloween episode. Um, that one I really liked. Um, this one? I don't know. I just really enjoyed it. Um, I'm a sucker for those, like, the scenarios where, like, all the characters stuck in one place and they have to talk to each other. Magnificent. Oh, the flavor of it all. Yes. And again, again. Okay. So my shipper glasses are on my face. Okay. <laughs> so I did see it a little bit, but like. Jealous Spike. Hello. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I literally had this whole thing where I was like, Buffy, she should like work on herself because she's just like had so much drama in her life. She should start working on herself. But then I'm like, <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> okay. So, um, obviously, uh, yeah. So the first part of this episode confused me a bit. What was, I guess it's just showing that like she's just leaving Dawn. And then the demon, like, set up for the rest of the episode. I don't know. I felt like we could have probably done without the demon just because the demon was a little much. I feel like they might have just added it just so, you know, we had the fight factor. Um, which I feel like a lot of shows, like, if the main thing is, like, demons and stuff, like, they feel like they have to, like, just add in a demon so that the main character can just, like, fight a demon in the episode. And, you know, the casual viewers are like, hey, Buffy the Vampire Slayer slaying a demon. Let's go. Um, I don't know. I feel like it would have been a little bit more interesting if it was just, just them in the house, like, still just, like, kind of, like, what was on, what was happening with Anya, like, just, like, losing her mind, like, losing her marbles inside and, like, just not being able to deal with it. I was very scared at first when she was, like, so hot in here. I'm, like, I'm, like, sweating and I was, like, Oh my god, is this like a little pregnancy like B plot that we're introducing right here? I was nervous. <laughs> I was so nervous that she was gonna be like, oh my god, wait, I, I haven't had my period in a bit. And I was like, no! <laughs> I don't know, pregnancy plots, they, if they're done correctly, yes. If I, I don't know, it takes a lot for me to like enjoy them. <laughs> So I was a little like, ah, no, please, no. But I really liked the direction that I actually went with, like, just Anya just, like, losing her marbles. Which, like, I don't know, just Anya's character, again, for me, I feel like a lot of episodes, it's just so, like, two-dimensional. Like, she's just there, she, like, does a funny line, she doesn't get social cues, haha, -ha, whatever. But this episode, I really liked how... 
Because, like, perfect people don't make good characters. So I like the fact that in this situation, she's just, like, going insane. And she's, like, lashing out on our friends. Because it's, like, if you had no way to leave a place and you're stuck with these people, like, you know, I feel like it's, like, kind of practical or, like, kind of nest up. Uh, understandable that's the word i was looking for understandable that like you would act the way that anya was um so yeah i don't know i really enjoyed um that and also she was saying some shit that i was like she's saying what i'm thinking a little bit she's saying what i'm thinking a little bit <laughs> um the whole like you know willow thing but i don't know i also really liked the opposite side of it where tara came to the rescue and was like hey anya back the fuck up and I don't know, I just love both sides of it to have that sort of, like, um, conflict in the episode. Again, I just, I thrive off of drama. So, like, to have a conflict, so fucking good. Okay, so she does say, I wish. I was just rewatching the scene. Um, she goes, I wish I could just make them stop going away. Very interesting, very interesting. I didn't even catch that she said, I wish. And I don't know, it's just, like... Obviously, we've done this plot before with um, the Wish episode, and you know that was the introduction of Anya's character. Um, but it some it just didn't feel like it was like a rehashed plot, in my opinion, because it was done so differently. It's not like a completely alternative universe where like you know Buffy, what was it? Buffy didn't meet them or something, or Buffy didn't move to Sunnydale. Um, it's just like a you know, a 16-year-old wish to have, you know, her loved ones be around her more often, which, I mean, God, I feel so bad for Dawn. Oh my God, this poor girl. Because it's like the dilemma that I feel like a lot of teenagers go through where it's like, you're the perfect child. So, you know, you have good grades, you act good, you do your chores and shit. And then it's like, because of that, you don't get any attention from your parents. And then if you act out, if you're a kleptomaniac and you steal shit and you're, you know, do all that, then you get your parents' attention. And it's like, hey, you know, obviously in a child's brain, it's very easy to like connect things like that and be like, oh, if I act out, my parent actually gives a shit about me and like treats me, you know, like talks to me um, and like pays attention to me. But it's also interesting that like she wasn't, you know, her kleptomaniac, like, her, like, stealing things. It wasn't something that, like, the cops were, like, called about and Buffy had to be, like, you know, you know? I'm not sure. It's, like, I wonder what the thing is where it's, like, you're stealing, but you're not telling anyone. This was a plotline in Pretty Little Liars, believe it or not. <laughs> One of the main characters was a kleptomaniac. Interesting. I'm just like reading more about kleptomania because I feel like I, I'm, I for sure have like learned about it, but I don't like know off the top of my head, like specific things about it. Um, and I'm reading this article um, and it says those at risk for kleptomania often live in homes where limits and boundaries are not clearly set. There might be rules that are not enforced or only enforced sometimes, which I think is very interesting because in another article, it was like, um, it can be common for, you know, children to just steal. Um, but the symptoms of kleptomania often disappear if you explain like the effect and the, like, like the trouble that you can get into by stealing things. Um, so just, like, the fact that, like, they're, like, you don't really know about the rules or, like, yeah, you have rules, but the rules don't really apply to you because, you know, at home, you know, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Um, which is very interesting. I wasn't really expecting that, but it makes sense. But yeah, if you, like, set clear rules and enforce consequences, it basically, like, it's able to, um, be treated. But, um, uh, Donnie, I do recommend therapy. Uh, that could be... Uh, helpful for you in this situation that you're in. <laughs> uh, all the articles so far have said therapy, good decision for kleptomania. <laughs> I don't know. I... It's a very interesting idea to have that be her like thing. Like her stealing things. I don't know. Rather than her like, you know, doing something that's like more in the vein of like another character. Like, you know, 
I was kind of expecting her to go down the path of like witchcraft and like, you know, she's doing spells that she shouldn't be doing, you know, but like we kind of already had that with Willow. But that's what I was expecting from Dawn's character for her to be like, oh, I want to be a witch. I want to, you know, be like Willow and Tara. And I want to do that kind of stuff. I don't know. It's also just so interesting how it's mentioned every once in a while. Like, oh, I'm going to, you know, my friend's house. And, you know, I'm spending the night over at my other friend's house. Da, da, da. How, like, normal, I guess, <laughs> Dawn's social interactions are. Um, because obviously we've seen Buffy in high school. And that poor girl could not catch a single fucking break. And, you know, she had to obviously, you know, train and patrol. And she couldn't really, you know, go to parties or anything. So to see like Buffy doing all this stuff and then to have Dawn being able to actually have some sort of normal like teenage like life, um, I don't know, makes me feel very happy that she's able to do that. I don't know. There's just a lot of like interconnecting things uh, about this episode that I really, really enjoyed watching. Yeah. Anyways, moving on. Oh my God. I want to talk about Tara for a hot sec. Oh my God. <laughs> I was so nervous that Tara was going to be at the party uh, because obviously, honestly, kind of a weird move to invite Tara when your best friend broke up with them. I don't know. Touchy subject. For me, I don't think I would have done that. I think I would have done like a separate thing with Tara at a different time, you know? Just, you know, not make waves or anything. But the fact that Tara came, I adore her. I adore her so fucking much. She, <laughs> I like, she's too good for this world. Oh my God. Like her sticking up for Willow, her being there for Buffy and like actually like seeing all the things that are happening with Spike and being like, Okay, Spike, settle the fuck down, buddy. I'm like, Tara, fuck it up. Let's go. Let's go. She is just the best friend that, like, I feel like every person needs, you know? I also just love, like, there is no malicious intent with, like, her seeing, Ta uh, seeing Willow or, you know, any of that. It's just, like, she genuinely still cares for Willow and wants her to, like, you know, obviously keep going through with, like, you know, not doing magic and all that. I just love her. Oh my god, her face when Willow said, oh, actually, I do have something still upstairs. I was about to cry. Oh my god. Tara was just like, oh, I could see the heartbreak that, like, happened. I was like, no, please. Don't do this to me, though, no, please. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, then uh, we had a couple other characters. We had the other demon that Spike came with. Very interesting concept to bring him, Spike. Uh, you, I don't even think you got an invite, and then you brought a plus one, so... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and then we had Richard. Poor dude. He literally goes to a party, you know, his friend's like, hey, I'm, you know, I have a friend that, you know, you guys might hit it off, you know, you want to come with me? And he's like, yeah, sure, why not? He ends up staying for two days straight and he gets stabbed. <laughs> Bum fucking deal. He doesn't even get Buffy's phone number. Bum fucking deal. That sucks for you. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, <laughs> that really sucks. And then I go, I almost forgot. I mean, also had Buffy's co worker come over. <laughs> that was a fun time. Oh my god, this party was popping. I am so glad they had so many characters in like Buffy's house for this party. Yes. I also love the way that they went about how to do the spell. Rather than them, you know, banging on the door, trying to, like, open it up, they are all, like, just the intent, like, the intent to want to, like, walk out the door. You can't do that. You can't even walk towards the door if you have the intent to try and walk out of it. I just thought that was so cool of them, like, being like, I am trying to move towards the door right now and I am not able to move. So good. Oh, so, so freaking good. But yeah, it is interesting that Anya 
I don't know. I thought Anya would be able to, like, feel the curse or the whatever that was happening. Like, the wish thing. But I guess she's not a demon anymore, so I guess she wouldn't. But, um, I am surprised Tara didn't get, like, be like, hey, something's off here. Because Tara, I feel like, is the one character where that happens a lot. Where she's able to, like, pinpoint and be like, hey, this isn't correct. Even when, um... What was it? I think it was when Buffy was in Faith's body and Faith was in Buffy's body. And she could, like, instantly tell, be like, this is in Buffy. And I don't know, again, Xander and Anya, I... I love them. <laughs> it's just, I... They do the whole, like, long-term relationship thing, I think, so well. With, like, them being so comfortable with each other to be like, Anya chill the fuck out over here about this um i don't know i just really liked it and um also the, the comment that she made uh anya made earlier in the episode where she was like what did you, wait i need to rewatch it like give me a second <laughs> she's like so hopefully you guys like you know you and richard can you know hopefully you guys can like get together hopefully some sparks fly hopefully you know we can go on double dates hopefully like we have someone else to talk to about our relationship <laughs> very accurate very accurate <laughs> the amount of times that like i i have like so many urges to like want to like go somewhere like with a friend or something i don't have friends but like i want to make friends and literally every time i'm like oh maybe i'll go here and then i'm like i'll just end up bringing my boyfriend and i won't even like end up talking to like other girls my age because it's like what girl would want to, like, talk to another girl and then her boyfriend? No one. Like, no one would want to be a third wheel and, like, be like, yeah, I'll be your friend and also I'll want to hang out with you and your boyfriend. Yeah, but my boyfriend is my friend, my best friend. Like, <laughs> so it sucks that, like, I don't have, um, another friend that also has a boyfriend. So then we can, like, go out on double dates and stuff. <laughs> but, um, anyways, I don't know. That was just a funny comment that I was like... Anya, I understand. I I get that. <laughs> yeah, anywho, um, of course, at the end, the, um, what was her name? The demon comes out. She's like, hey, what's up? That was me. Um, and I think it's really funny the fact that she comes into the house and then is like, you know what? You guys are staying here, okay? Peace out. And then she tries to leave and then she's like, Damn, my curse is really fucking good. I can't even get out of here. But yeah, again, uh, the demon um, that was, like, you know, trying to fight everyone. Um, I don't know. It just felt like, I guess, I was about to say it felt out of place. But, like, in Sunnydale and in this universe, I guess it doesn't feel out of place. Because, like, that's just how things are. You know, there's always a demon somewhere trying to fuck shit up. Every time the demon was on screen trying to fight someone, I was like, okay, I don't really care about this. <laughs> let's, let's continue on. Okay. Oh no, someone's gonna get like slashed. Oh no. Okay. Yeah. We still have no way of getting out of here for medical attention. Oh no. And it's like, I don't know. I just don't really care about it, I guess, that much. Um... But yeah, you guys can definitely tell me your thoughts on that. Yeah, I don't know. This episode, I enjoyed. I liked, you know, the different angles that they went about everything with the different relationships and the different characters. And I love the ending as well with everyone leaving and then Buffy deciding to stay in with Dawn. Stop. I love it so much. I love it. But yeah, there is a bunch of stuff happening and... Yeah, I really liked it. I also just love Dawn's character. So I understand if you're not a Dawn Stanny, like you might not like this episode, but I adore Dawn. She definitely doesn't deserve any shit that anyone is giving her. Like me watching the beginning of season five, I will fight her. Like, why was I giving Dawn so much shit? I want to fight myself. Like past me, square the fuck up. I don't know. I love her so much. Anyways, I am going in circles now, but um, the next episode that I will be watching is the next Angel episode, episode 14 of season three. So yeah, super excited to continue on with Angel. So much stuff happening. So much. But uh, yeah. Anywho, with that, thank you to all my beautiful patrons over on Patreon. I will see you guys next video. Bye! <laughs>